first question really is what, what does your department do? Well, we're not actually a department. We're a um, Centre for Research Excellence, uh, the Bioprotection Research Centre, and we're concerned with biosecurity and the bioprotection of New Zealand's plants. So we look at things like invertebrate pests, weeds and diseases of, of plants, whether it's indigenous or whether it's the productive sector. But you're quietly smiling because you've just landed some funding. We've just been refunded for the next five years, uh, which of course is huge for us. Um, it's relatively difficult for groups that's, that look at fundamental research to get funding outside um, government grants. We can always get some co-funding from industry, but to keep ourselves going, to be able to do the sort of fundamental work we do for the capability development, all the PhDs we train, you know, the next generation of researchers, we really need that government funding. So what sort of research is coming out of here? We work a lot on uh, sustainable systems for, for pest de disease and weed management. And so that's like biological control options. It's like being able to predict what the next pest will be that gets to New Zealand, the next weed will be. Understanding how organisms become invasive, understanding why biological control works sometimes and doesn't work others, and how we can actually come up with the, the step change that will make all that work better in the future. Not just incremental change, but actually whole new systems. It must be interesting trying to work out what's going to hit next. It is, and it's an inexact science, um, generally because we just, well, we can't predict exactly what will hitch a ride here. We can predict that when, when, they, when something gets here, whether it will become a pest or not. And so it's a, we generally get surprised by the actual species that turned up, not surprised by its success. And I think that's one of the, um, the learnings over the last 10 years, is that we really... We can go beyond, say, climate matching and just, it, it's much more complicated than that. There's a whole topologies involved. There's what's already here that might attack um, a, a new invader. So not everything that arrives here is successful, but a couple that are successful can cause us huge, huge losses. Well, if you look at gorse, which has obviously been around a long time, I mean, that grows better here than anywhere else in the world. That's right. And we have examples of that, uh, the, the wasps, uh, the, the German wasp and the common wasp, uh, probably more successful here than, than they are anywhere else. And they, this is a pattern that you see when an organism arrives in an environment that doesn't have its, its natural controls. And we have a relatively simple ecosystem in New Zealand. We don't have a lot of layers of parasites and predators that will automatically attack a new invader. And so we get big outbreaks. We're also dependent on relatively few plant species to make our money. You know, very, very few grasses, a few crops, monocultures, very susceptible to um, new invaders. You've got nothing to do with airport security, but you're more of the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff? Yeah, we do do um, work that does inform airport security, uh, especially uh, some of the pathway analysis and predicting, but we work very closely with um, several other organisations there's a program called the Better Border Biosecurity that we're a partner of, that it's exactly that. It's looking at border biosecurity and how to make it better. Our research is one step back along that fundamental axis um, away from the very applied, and we're looking for what are the technologies that you could use to make that better that we haven't even tried yet. How do you start working out what you're going to be doing? Because you don't know where to start. You, you need people who are experienced, enough to actually have an understanding of the area of what's been done before because you don't want to reinvent the world, the wheel, the world, the wheel. Well, either really. <laughs> um, but uh, agile enough in their mind that they can bring technology from outside. It's also, and what this is the real benefit of having a Centre for Research Excellence, we have over 11 institutes in New Zealand contributing scientists to our, our efforts. We have five partner organisations that make, make up our core. These, these people all get together and feed off each other and come up with the new ideas. If you're working your way in a lab just by yourself, you're very unlikely to come up with a whole new breakthrough. It's the other people you talk to and, the, and their ideas from a slightly different field that you need to incorporate. And that's, that's our strength. And the fact that a lot of our work um, is based around PhDs and postdocs, those young people who are not yet cynical about what's possible. And, and they drive a lot of the innovation. And so it's that mix. You, you need those um, very experienced people to put some reality around and to, um, to guide the research. You need young, agile minds. Have you got any contact with people outside New Zealand? Very much. We have to be internationally focused because although what we do has to be done in New Zealand because our ecosystems are unique, 
we have to be informed by what's what's the best science going around the world. And we're, we're very strongly linked overseas, um, both through our, our attendance to other research institutes. A lot of people come and visit us as well, because New Zealand is very strong in biosecurity research, bioprotection research. A lot of countries are not as focused on that anymore and are finding that they don't have the trained people that they would have had 20 years ago. It's not a sexy science. So a student who wants to work overseas, this is obviously a very important place to come. Very much, yes. And we are training more New Zealanders. It's still the ratio is very much um, at the postgrad level to international students coming here. We also are very careful to track where our graduates go because that makes a difference. And somewhere around 66%, well, I think, when we ran the figures of students we train stay in New Zealand working in industry, working in government, working in research. And that's about the right figure for us. We need some going back overseas to get more experience, and they often come back, but we, we need to be retaining these people we're training. Travis, how safe are our shores? Um, we do a, an incredibly good job for a very difficult uh, situation. You know, I've been in other countries. I was in Florida, and Florida is a perfect example of what New Zealand doesn't want to be. Over 50 new invaders every year, they can only deal with two or three. And so an awful lot is just let go and, is, and it will cause problems and minor industries suffer from it. We don't want to be in that situation. We're still good enough at it that our, our security breaches are big news. We don't want to be in a situation where our security breaches are yet one more. And I think we're getting better all the time. And we work very closely with the ministry as well. And you know, I think overall we do a good job.